Yeah, good morning all. Uh, this is Vasant here from the Fundamental Research Team. Uh, so, wishing everyone a very happy uh, Diwali. So, if you see the US uh, market, uh, I mean, in fact, if you see the overall global queue today morning is quite mixed. Uh, uh, the US markets overnight, I mean, they ended on a negative note with S&P 500 was down that 0.33% and NASDAQ was down more than 0.5%. Uh, that's uh, largely uh, because, you know, after the, the corporate earnings that were announced and the macro data that were uh, announced. So, if you see the Q3 GDP for the US, it came in at 2.8%, which was lower than the consensus estimate of around 3% and also lower than 3%, which was there uh, uh, in earlier. Uh, uh, also, the good thing was that only the, that the job growth data which came, I mean, they, it came in at higher than expected at 233,000 uh, jobs in October. So overall, if you see the US 10-year yield, it continues to be on a rising spree. I mean, it increased at five basis points now, and it is at 4.3%. Uh, this is like uh, highest level since uh, July uh, 10. Uh, today also in the US, uh, the results of Apple and Amazon would be announced, which are big numbers. Uh, so that so the volatility would be there going ahead. And if you see Asian markets also, they also opened on the lower uh, end, uh, you know, because uh, the Bank of uh, Japan rate decision is there and also China factory output data would be announced. With respect to Bank of Japan uh, rate decision, it is expected that the, the, you know, the policy, they will leave the policy unchanged uh, because of the uncertainties with respect to Japan as well as US elections. So, I mean, if you see overall next one week, seven to eight days would be quite volatile. I mean, because they're considering that the next week we have U.S. elections, FOMC meet, uh, uh, Chinese uh, Central uh, Bank meet. So all these factors would keep the you know markets across uh, globally and also in India quite volatile. In fact, in India, we have the result season which is going on and we are seeing that the sharp reactions which are coming to the stock prices uh, based on the results. Uh, I mean, so that, that should be watch out for. So overall, we are suggesting that one should be very uh, stock selective and prefer uh, more of a large caps uh, and that too in a high quality uh, companies and companies you know which are uh, delivering a good set of uh, numbers uh, so now in the domestic market again the a lot of uh, results were announced uh, yesterday i will discuss the uh, four to five important uh, numbers or interesting results which came in so starting with uh, larsen and tubro so lnt numbers were quite uh, good so, if you see, in fact, it was, it was considered to be a strong quarter. Uh, the company's management has maintained the guidance on all the fronts, basically. So, if you see the LNT SPAC number came in at 3,400 crores, which was mainly led by higher revenue and other income. Uh, in fact, the PAC number, if you adjust it for one of the PA, uh, one of like, you know, then the PAC number growth is stands at 25%. Hence, we are saying that it's a very good number from LNT. Uh, further, LNT's uh, management has maintained that the revenue growth of 15% and the order inflow growth of 10% would be maintained and the margin guidance of around 8.25% for FY25. Uh, so overall, uh, you know, uh, as per the institute team, we considering that the lower uh, asset intensity along with the push from the recent uh, buyback. So all this should drive ROE expansion, which can in increase from 14.8% in FY24 to 18% levels in FY26. So this is a good thing and because of this, they have also maintained a buy rating on, on LNT with a target price, uh, they have revised upward to around 3825, uh, right? And they have uh, p and business, they are valuing at 30 times FY26 EPS. Another good set of numbers were announced by uh, Tata Power. Uh, so Tata Power, uh, uh, so revenue came in at 15,700 crores and EBITDA came in at 3,300 crores, which was up 18% and was above estimates. Uh, uh, this was mainly driven by you know one offs such as the, there was a favorable regulatory order by the Delhi distribution uh, uh, business and uh, which added you know additional EBIT of 230 crores. So overall PAT number for Tata Power came in at 1100 uh, crores. Uh, going ahead, so it is expected that the uh, you know over 2024 to 2027, it is expected that revenue uh, CAGR would be 10 percent for Tata Power and EBIT CAGR would be much much better at 15 percent. Hence, the institute has also maintained a buy rating on the stock uh, with an SOTP based target price of uh, you know, 501 per share. And uh, the, the upside from the current price is around 17%, uh, you know, for Tata Power. Now, coming to the, some weak numbers, you know, that were uh, or weak or mixed numbers that were announced uh, yesterday, starting with, uh, you see, uh, DABA. So, DABA's, uh, it was a weak quarter for DABA and the main thing is that there was a 
concern over rising competition in its core categories. So if you see Dabur's earnings print was largely in line with the expectations, but why we are seeing the weak numbers because our expectations are already subdued. So coming in line with the subdued expectations indicates you know weak set of numbers. Uh, mainly the company in this quarter went for an inventory uh, correction in its uh, domestic uh, channels. Uh, now with the inventory correction now completed, the company expects that the revenue growth should revert to the mid-high single uh, digit uh, number in the second half. Uh, but overall, you know, NC team also considering the weak uh, Q2 numbers by uh, Dabur, they have cut their earnings estimate by 5 to 7 percent over uh, next two years. And considering, as I mentioned, that increasing competitive intensity, especially in its oral care, juices, and hair care business, and volatility of performance in core categories. So the visibility in earnings remains weak, and hence it is believed that the risk reward ratio does not appear favorable for Dabur at current moment. And hence they have also maintained a hold rating on the stock with a target price of uh, 580. Another weak set of numbers were announced by Automotive Excel. Um, like uh, there was a decline on all the fronts, whether it's net profit, which was down 20%, whether revenue, which was down 15%, EBITDA was also down like 23%, and margins were also down at 10.3% versus 11.3% last year. So a negative reaction uh, uh, would be expected on this uh, stock, Automotive Excel. Uh, lastly, from the result perspective, we have a pharma company, Biocon. So Biocon numbers were again uh, on a weak set of uh, weak set of numbers. Uh, the net profit came in at 27 crores, which was down very sharply from 170 crores uh, uh, last year. That's a drop of 18, 84%. Revenue, though we witnessed an increase uh, on a YY basis, but the increase was quite uh, uh, minuscule at uh, not or not very high at 3.7% on a YY basis. <coughs> Lastly, the EBITDA came in at 685 crores. Uh, down 7.4 percent. In fact, the expectation was for 740 crores. So again, a negative reaction is expected on uh, from Biocon. Now, staying with the uh, pharma. Uh, so basically, uh, the, today, I mean, there is not much results are there. Uh, however, uh, Narayana Rudraila uh, results are there uh, today. Uh, if you see the expectations with respect to Narayana, so sales number of 14, 1,435 crores is expected. Whereas PAT number of 219 crores is expected. PAT on a YY uh, basis is expected to decline, but on a quarter on quarter, it is expected to be healthy at 8.8%. Uh, if we go into the internals, so India hospital EBITDA is expected to grow at 12%, which will be aided by higher uh, average revenue per operating bed. Whereas the Cayman uh, Island business, uh, which is an international business for uh, Narana, uh, it is expected to report 6% YY EBITDA growth. Uh, also on Monday, a lot of results will be announced uh, once the market opens. So ABB India results will be announced. Uh, we expect that the ABB India's numbers would be quite uh, good. One should keep an eye on this uh, uh, company. So we, uh, the revenue or the net sales are expected at around 3,200 crores, which will be up 16% on a YY basis and 13% on a quarter and quarter basis. EBITDA would also be up like 37%. And EBITDA margin would be improved from 15% to 18.8%. Uh, and PAT number of 5, 000, uh, 500 crores is expected, which will be up 38%. So as you can see, an overall very strong set of numbers are expected from uh, ABB India on Monday. In terms of actionable, so like uh, yesterday, uh, we came out with a uh, uh, result update note on Sumito Chemical, uh, which on which on the stock on which we have been quite uh, positive. Uh, owing to the mid-cap correction which we have witnessed over the last few days, the stock has uh, corrected. But we believe that current levels are quite interesting, you know, one to consider. Uh, we have a target price of 650 and we have an upside of 17 percent, you know, uh, decent upside from 17 to 18 percent. Uh, so mainly in Q2, the key highlight was that the operating margin was uh, you know, came in at 24.8 percent, which was up. Uh, like around uh, 165 uh, basis uh, points. Uh, that's mainly because of recovery in the export market and uh, effective procurement in raw materials. Uh, so overall, we continue to be positive on Sumito Chemicals' story, considering that some massive opportunity is there in the contract manufacturing space, especially from the uh, parent. And also the, ex uh, the performance in the export market, we expect it continues to be improved. Uh, and we, thus we expect the patch CAGR of 28% for Sumito Chemical over next three years with a very healthy ROE and, and uh, return on capital employed of 21%.
Thus, uh, we have maintained a target price of uh, 650 and we maintain and recommend a buy rating on Sumito Chemical. Lastly, uh, from the news uh, perspective, Adani Power would be in focus as it has signed a 25 year power supply agreement, that is, PSA agreement with Maharashtra uh, State Electricity Distribution Company. Uh, the agreement is for 1000 around 1500 megawatt uh, power supply uh, uh, such so yeah so the that could be positive for adani power so yeah that's it from my side i hand over for the update good morning all akshay from the technicals and derivatives desk uh, first of all best wishes uh, for the festivities uh, uh, happy diwali to all First on the Nifty outlook, uh, well, uh, it's been a kind of uh, some relief in the last couple of days. Uh, but if one looks at the numbers, the uh, selling continues in the cash space from the FIIs. Uh, selling of over 1 lakh 8,000 odd crores has been noted just in the month of uh, October itself. And in the future's FNO segment, the long short ratio is around 36 uh, odd percent of longs compared to around 64 percent of shorts. Roughly around 30,000 crores of selling is apparent <clears throat> in the October month in the futures and option segments. So there is no much relief uh, from the data front from the FIA desk. Now what needs to be watched out here is uh, the uh, one is the expiry today and second the US election event which is on 5th of November. So ahead of the US elections uh, there is a good chance that we might see a spike in the volatility index. Now if we were to look at some levels on the volatility index which is the VIX it closed around 15, 15.2 odd levels and uh, on the price chart front 15.5 is an important resistance point as far as uh, uh, the next three to four trading session goes because if we see a breakout of this level on the India VIX, there is a good chance that the volatility index may spike up all the way till 20, 22% ahead of uh, the US election date. So uh, there is a good chance that uh, options are going to be a bit expensive from where they are. It does not necessarily mean that if VIX goes up, market will fall because in situations where there is a mega event, normally we see uh, a direct correlation or a, a positive correlation where the indices and the VIX may move in tandem. Uh, this is one of an exceptional cases because normally options are being bought uh, ahead of uh, the event. So uh, as an option writer who is placing themselves for the mega event, next two to three trading sessions go a bit soft on uh, writing, especially for the monthly or the coming weekly expiries because uh, you are not going to get immediate time value depreciation uh, on uh, your straddles or strangles which you write if the VIX were to spike up. Now, uh, on the uh, Nifty index, uh, well, uh, it's pretty apparent going by the last couple of days trading session that 24,500 basis spot is turning out to be uh, an important short term resistance zone. There is a strong call writing presence at the strike of 24,500 and even prices confirm this view. Now, uh, we did see some bit of weakness again in yesterday's trading session. And if you look at the broader placement on the Nifty index uh, and even in the stocks, there have been a lot of short bets which have been prevalent in the derivative segment in the October month. And uh, going by the broader price structure, there is a good chance that uh, we, there can be no major covering, at least on the expiry day, because the, the shorts will be left to expire, considering the fact that we are almost significantly down and there has been no major rebound uh, in the indices in the last couple of days. Uh, so the expectation is uh, that uh, with, a, uh, with a rollover of around 59%, which we have seen in the Nifty index yesterday. Normally on an average, on a three month average, we stand around 65%. The rollovers are a tad less than the averages, but this is bound to happen because uh, we are facing uh, the mega event, that's the US elections, and positioning is expected to be a bit light ahead of the event, where short bets also might uh, go a bit slow in the November series in the initial couple of days. So for the expiry day today, how would Nifty trade? We believe 24,500 is an important level and uh, unless 54,525 crosses, there is not going to be any momentum uptick in the Nifty. So the chances of 54,500 breaking as of now looks low considering the fact that even gift Nifty hints for a soft opening uh, on the indices. From here, if it corrects, then the key level of support is around 24,150 to 24,200. So as a put writer, if you are placed around 24,200, 250 for the day, you need to be a bit alert. Post-opening, it's better you just shift your writing bets to lower strikes because 
if there is any kind of weakness during the day, there is a good chance that Nifty may again hit the lower end still 24,150 to 24,200. So the expectation for the day is it might be a bit choppy, but should be, should be mostly in a range. The broader range expectation is 24,200 on the lower end and 24. Uh, 500 on the upper end. This is the range where the call or the option writers uh, can place their writing bets. But our tilt or the view is on the slightly on the negative side as far as the day trading goes. And uh, the first half hour rule is to be followed where you might get some cues as to which way the indices would move. In case of a slight soft or negative opening and the first half an hour sees some negative tinge, there is a good chance that we might uh, go on the lower end of the band, which is around 24, 200, 250 zone. So that's the view for the Nifty index for the expiry day. The bank index has been a very strong mover, but surprisingly in yesterday's trade, it started with a gap down open and we did see some slight softness in uh, prices in the bank Nifty. Overall, uh, looking at uh, the broader positioning, it is the PSU pack uh, lately which has been supporting the bank index. And uh, uh, if you look at the bank index, the options placement suggests that 52,000 uh, 500 in calls for the coming weekly expiry has a high presence of writing, whereas uh, 51,500 and 52,000 both inputs have some put writing action. So we are almost uh, slightly below, we close around 51,800, slightly below the put writing support. So there is a good chance that again for day trading, Bank Nifty might see some bit of a respite, some bit of a recovery uh, from the support zone of around 51,700 to 800 zone. So for day trading, if one has to position themselves in the bank index, the levels to keep in mind would be 51,700 to 750 zone. There is a good chance that these zones might act as demand points for day traders and we might see some bit of a recovery in bank nifty today, in which case uh, 52,100 and 52,250 become the active levels or the resistance point on the upside. As far as the rollovers go in the bank index, uh, we have noted rollovers of uh, around 69%, which are almost in line with the three-month average rollover readings of 70% in the bank index. So broadly, it's more of a neutral uh, uh, positioning as uh, we move into the November series for the bank index. Stock-specific action. Uh, well, uh, broadly, uh, what is evident in the last couple of days is that there's a lot of long liquidation which is apparent in the IT space. So now one has to be very careful if uh, significant long bets or trading bets are positioned in the IT names from a short term perspective because uh, clearly the, uh, the IT sector or many of the stocks from the IT space has seen a significant long liquidation in the last couple of days. Even if I look at the IT index uh, as it uh, closed yesterday, uh, although this uh, index did give a, a strong positive breakout uh, a, a couple of uh, trading sessions back, it has reversed back below its uh, breakout level, which is not a good sign if you are a short-term uh, trader in the IT space. So uh, keep strict stop losses, slight recoveries, try to take an exit because at least from the short term, I do not see any major recovery happening in the IT space. In fact, there is a risk that we may slightly slide down going ahead as we move into the November month. So there is slight word of caution in the IT space. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, in case of uh, buying names, uh, now PSU names have seen a lot of uh, uh, accumulation or buying interest in the last uh, uh, three four trading sessions. This may not react immediately for the day, but uh, overall we believe that uh, most of the PSU names, especially stocks having uh, exposure in the futures and option space, are in the process of building a support. Most of them are confirming a support base and are on the verge of the breakout. So stocks to watch here will be State Bank, State Bank of India, which did see some strong momentum uptake uh, a couple of trading sessions back, and the Bank of Baroda, which is almost on the verge of a breakout uh, at the point of around uh, uh, 360 odd levels. So uh, uh, there is some strength in these names in the PSU space. Also, not to mention, also forgot to mention Canara Bank, which too has an excellent short-term technical setup. Uh, from the short to medium term perspective. Uh, now, another other space which we need to speak see on the long side where there has been significant rolls a day before the expiry would be the cement pack and the reality space. Names here in the reality space would be DLF and Oberoi reality. And in cement, cement space, it will be Ramco cement, uh, and ACC uh, and <clears throat> Grasim along with Ultra Semco, which are noting some uh, long additions uh, in the last couple of trading sessions in this space. 
uh, a possible short candidates if one is inclined on the short side of trade keep a watch on auto space although they have seen some bit of a recovery in the last prior trading session names like tvs motors tata motors these still have a negative setup slight bounce back in these names can be used as sorting opportunities from short term trading perspective because the broader technical setup is still negative and expect the down drift to continue in these names also coal india has one more stock which has a negative setup slight recovery in the last couple of days but still uh, the broader setup is indicating that the stock may head for lower levels of 420 uh, so uh, that's the broader update uh, i have uh, on the indices and the stocks uh, i'll hand over for pranav to take it over from there Thank you, Akshay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, happy Diwali to everybody uh, out here. And uh, in the commodity space, so we have seen continued uh, rally into the precious metals with gold prices you know, hitting above dollar twenty eight hundred per ounce mark. While in the Indian markets, prices have uh, come you know breathe past the crucial resistances and you know coming close to eighty thousand per ten gram. So uh, the trend still remains very much positive. Yesterday's economic data that was released from the US were on a mixed note. We saw the job openings witnessing a, sl- uh, a slight increase, while the US uh, GDP co- uh, slowed down uh, 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 you know, less than expected. So the mixed data still starts coming in. Also, there are a few important data that are lined up today as well, with CPI inflation coming from eurozone, as well as the inflation numbers in terms of the PCE, that is the personal consumption expenditure, which the Fed watches very closely before deciding on its uh, interest rate trajectory or the monetary policy trajectory. So the data uh, would be closely watched by traders, market participants, later in the day to day, which could give more clues on the Fed's uh, rate path. Apart from that, uh, morning we had the China manufacturing and the non-manufacturing PMI data. The data is not much encouraging, but we have seen a slight expansion in the manufacturing activity in China, while the services activity continues to remain in the uh, expansion phase. The, also, the Bank of Japan has come out with its monetary policy, keeping the rates unchanged at 0.25 percent. Coming on to the technical levels, gold the intraday trend still remains very much on the positive side. Strong support to watch out is seventy nine thousand two ninety. Now, till the support is not breached, any dip close to this levels is a buying opportunity at lower levels. Upside, we can expect prices to test eighty thousand one hundred eighty thousand four fifty levels. Silver trades little cautiously as prices are uh, in a consolidative mode uh, so far in the week, witnessing some two sided volatility. Overall, the trend still remains positive. Still trading above 95, 500, 94, 200 levels. But uh, levels, but intraday moves are very much consolidative and volatile as well. Watch out for support on the downside at 96, 550. Next support on the downside would be around 95, 500. While on the upside, resistance for silver is seen at around 98, 6901 lakh, 100 levels. In the energy space, yesterday we had seen some good buying support coming back in oil prices. For intraday, we will watch out for support at 56.90, which is yesterday's low. A break below 56.90, we may see some more uh, again a corrective move in uh, crude prices down close to 55, 55, net levels. But till that support at 56.90 is not breached, there is a possibility the prices may trade with a positive momentum and can move up close to 58.20, 58.40, and a breakout above 58.50. Prices uh, we could exchange these gains and move up close to 59 to 56,000 levels as well. Natural gas is in a corrective mode. 242 to 244 is the resistance to watch out. Till these two levels are not breached, we can remain on the sell side and expect prices to dip close to 232 to 228 levels in the intraday trades. Among base metals, copper is in a consolidative mode. It's going nowhere, stuck between 850 on the higher side to 830 on the downside. While Another matter is zinc. Uh, in particular, watch out for support at 286.50. A break below 286.50 in intraday today, there is a possibility of a small corrective move coming in zinc. We could see prices coming down close to 284 to 82 levels. But till that support at 286.50 is not breached, the prices can again recover and move up close to 290 to 292 levels. So this is all from my side. We'll open the forum for Q&A.